What is going on, guys? We are back playing some more Surviving with Create 0.3, and today we are going to be setting up a radial quarry. Now, we've set up multiple different types of automated mining in this series so far, ranging all the way from the very basic tunnel bore up to the extremely overly complicated, self-expanding, self-returning automated quarry, which you can actually kind of see in the distance over there. And both of those were extremely fun. I actually think any form of automated mining in Create is crazy fun to set up which is why I'm always open to making more of them. And the one we're gonna be going over today actually falls right in the middle in terms of difficulty and item yield compared to the two that we've already done. So it's actually not that complicated to set up. It's very basic redstone and not a ton of blocks that you need, but it also is gonna get you about 50,000 items. And if you don't know that in terms of scale, well, that's about 14 double chests, assuming they're completely full with stacks of 64. So. That's a fair bit of items and it really doesn't require much time investment. So I actually think this is one of the best options in terms of automated mining in Create. And on top of that, it's actually gonna look the coolest out of everything we've done so far because you're basically gonna have a drill that's spinning in a circle all the way down to the core of the earth, right at the bedrock. And you're gonna be left with this enormous 33 diameter cylinder all the way down to the ground. So. I think it's going to look really cool. It's going to get you a ton of items. It's very simple to do. So I'd suggest you actually go with this one if you haven't already set one up before. And even if you have, maybe you still go with this one because it's going to be a lot of fun. But without further ado, let's jump into the items we need for today's setup. So like I already said, the item requirements for today's episode are minimal at best. If we look in the chest right here, this is everything we need for the entire setup from start to finish. And the mechanical blocks are on top, some miscellaneous building blocks are on the bottom left here, and then some things to start it and stop it, and also make sure stuff is glued together is on the bottom right. So to start out, we need 17 mechanical drills, and I will say you can decrease or increase the amount of drills you use for this setup, but if you do that, you're going to have to scale the amount of chests you have accordingly, because as you increase the amount of drills, you're increasing the diameter of the circle and basically exponentially increasing the amount of items that you're going to need to collect. And if you do not have enough chests, you're gonna miss out on the blocks that are at the bottom of the quarry, which means things like diamonds might actually get dropped and you don't get them. So it's definitely important that you scale this up accordingly if you don't follow my exact build. But 17 drills, two redstone contacts, five redstone links, two adjustable repeaters, one powered latch, two pieces of redstone, two magma blocks, two encased fans, a block of redstone, a lever, 31 chests, three vertical gearboxes, a mechanical bearing, one clutch, a rope pulley, a sequence gear shift, and that's it for the mechanical components. It's really not that expensive. You're also gonna want about a stack of glass, about a stack of stone, some ladders, and then a button, a lever, and a fair bit of super glue. And if you wanna enchant this with unbreaking to make sure you get the most out of it, go for it. I don't think you'll use up an entire thing in today's setup, but you're gonna be gluing a lot of these blocks together because you're gonna be moving a lot of different parts on multiple axes and making sure that they are all properly attached. So definitely an important thing to have, but that's everything for today's episode. So we should be good to grab pretty much all this stuff out and start getting to work. So we've gone over the item requirements that you need for the setup. There is one other thing you need though, and that is some space to build in. So as you can see, I'm not actually right at my base right now. That's a little bit over there. I'm out in a nice cleared out area that's relatively flat, and that's really important to have. You wanna make sure you're in an area that's pretty flat, doesn't need to be perfectly flat, but relatively the same level in terms of terrain and doesn't have trees or anything obstructing it. And you're gonna wanna make sure that's at least the size of the circle you're going to be clearing out. So in our case, a diameter of 33, which means if you wanna pick a center block and go out 16 blocks in either direction to make sure that it's all clear, then you'll be good to go. Once you have that though, we should be good to start building. So to start setting things up, we are first going to want to find the area roughly where we wanna center our quarry on, and then we are going to want to build up a couple blocks. Now for me, I can be pretty relaxed with where I wanna actually set this up. Obviously, there's a ton of room around here, but if you're in a more confined space, you might wanna be pretty exact with where you actually pillar up and start building this, but either way, you're gonna to wanna to come up a couple blocks just so that 
the lowest level of your quarry, which is where the drills will be, are above the highest level of terrain they'll come in contact with. So for me, maybe they come in contact with that one right over there. So one block up from where the ground is here. And to make my life easier, I'm just going to want to make sure I'm maybe three or four blocks off the ground so that the drills are able to come down and hit that and don't end up swinging into it from the side because they're on the same level. If that happens, you're going to run into a situation where the area doesn't get fully cleared out at those specific Y levels. It's going to look a little bit weird and it's just a pain to start things out. So making sure you're up high enough when you first start and simply lower your quarry down to the appropriate level is a good place to begin. Now that we've pillared up to an appropriate height right at the center of where our setup should be, we can put down the first block and that is going to be the mechanical bearing. So if we just hold shift and jump up, we can place it facing down, which is exactly how we want it. And this block, like I said, is going to be the center portion of where you are clearing out simply because all the drills are going to be attached to this and a line and it's just going to swing them all the way around. So this will be the center point and everything will build off of that. Now, before we go any further, it's important that we touch on the super gluing aspect of this setup because a lot of stuff in here needs to be attached together properly or it's not going to work. Now, for those of you that do not know, you can actually super glue blocks together very easily by putting it in your offhand and every new block you place down will then be super glued on whatever face you place it on. This is a little bit dangerous when you're doing this setup today, though, because a lot of blocks will be adjacent to each other. But if they get attached to each other, they're going to break the entire setup. So in some of these cases, you'll see that I use it like this. In other cases, you'll see I manually apply it just to make sure that the appropriate faces in some critical areas are properly attached. So if you feel like you're an expert at it, feel free to always keep it in your offhand. But just something I would suggest since the first thing I'm going to tell you if your setup doesn't work and you think you did it right is you might have glued something on incorrectly and it's causing the entire thing to not want to move. Either way, though, it's important to remember to glue stuff together. So once we get that out of the way, we are going to grab out a clutch. We're going to grab out some vertical gearboxes an encased fan and some magma blocks, and we should be good to start getting the rotational power for this mechanical bearing going. So the first thing we're gonna wanna do is put down some super glue and put a clutch on here, then some super glue again, and a vertical gearbox, some super glue again, and another vertical gearbox right here. And then we're actually gonna wanna get below this, so we can just hop down real quick and down here, we're gonna wanna super glue this face, Put down an encased fan right onto the bottom of this if it would let me. Let's, uh, there we go. And then right below this, again, super glue and a magma block. And it really does not want to let me put these down on there. I don't know why, that's being weird. But regardless, we now have a rotational power supply coming in for this. If we were curious if it's working, we could simply toss down a lever on the side of this, flick it, you'll see this starts to get rotational power. But you can now see why we have a redstone block. Eventually, we are going to have to give this redstone power. And we're not going to do it just yet because then it would start rotating the mechanical bearing. And that would make our life very difficult. We'll do it as pretty much the last step. But either way, you can see this clutch then gets powered with a lever. But it won't with the redstone block. So that's why we're going with that option. We'll eventually glue that on. But it's not critical for the time being. So now we're pretty much done with this portion of the setup. We're good to clear out these stone blocks right down here and begin working on the drill head that's going to attach to the bottom of this bearing. So we're going to grab out all 17 of our mechanical drills and we're going to place one down right below this mechanical bearing. And then we are going to put the super glue in our offhand for this one. And we are going to build out using these mechanical drills. And we're gonna to wanna to go out the opposite side that we put this magma block and encased fan setup on. So we're gonna build out over here and just make sure these are all super glued to each other. And we're gonna come out with all, technically we're coming out 16 from the center. Whoops, that's not right. We'll just make sure we get rid of that and finish up like this. Now you might need to orient them properly if you didn't place them down right with a wrench, but that's totally fine. It shouldn't mess up the super glue or anything. Once you have this though, you're good to go. And don't worry, it won't look weird like this. If you don't have the super glue out, you won't be able to see it, but you wanna make sure these are all appropriately attached to each other. And then we are good to come back up. We'll use some scaffolding though. And we'll just come right back up over here. And now we get to put down the storage on top of all these drills. So again, this is another scenario where we can just slap it into our offhand because we're gonna be placing them down right on top of these drills. And we are just going to go one chest at a time, 
all the way to the end, but we're not going to place it down on the last one. So we'll go like this. And now that we're at the last one, we're gonna wanna grab out a redstone contact and place that down right here. And we're gonna wanna have it facing up, but make sure it is attached to the drill at the bottom here because this redstone contact needs to be swinging around with this rotating drill head right here all the way. Once we have all that done, we're just gonna wanna come back to the front and place down the rest of the chest right off the side of these right here. Because again, we need to make sure that we have an appropriate amount of storage because this thing is gonna give us a heck of a lot of items and we definitely don't wanna miss out on any of those. So we're going to put down all the way across another row of chests and this should be sufficient. Obviously that is 31 chests in total. And that'll give us about four or five buffer chests on top of what we're supposed to get. Obviously, there'll be caves you hit, but you'll also hit things like redstone where you get more than a single block per. And you're not always going to get up to 64 before you have to move on to a different item. So it's better to be safe than to be sorry. Once we have this, though, we need to then build out the next portion of the setup using some glass. And this one is where the super glue becomes really important. So we want this glass to be put attached to this clutch right here, but we do not want it to be attached to anything on this bottom portion. So nothing like this contact, these chests, anything like that. And we are going to want to make sure that it's glass or something that a chest can be opened when it's under, because we need to be able to access all these chests when we come down or go up to get all the loot. So we're going to put all these glass blocks down right here. And when we get out here, we're going to want to put down the redstone contact. So we can put it down, we need to make sure it's super glued to this glass, and then we're just gonna have to rotate it so that it's facing down into that one down there. And again, you just really need to make sure that you do not accidentally glue this contact to the one below it when you put it down if you're trying to orient it correctly right out the gate. Once you have this, the only other thing we need to put on here is going to be a redstone link, super glued right to the top of this contact right here. So we'll put that down. And then we're gonna set the frequency of this to two redstone blocks. Once we have that, we're pretty much done with this portion of the setup too, other than the redstone component that's going to turn on and off this clutch, which will be important once we eventually have some rotational power coming in. But again, if we did that right now, we'd have some serious issues with trying to stand on this and set it up. So we're going to grab out some stone and we are going to build off this mechanical bearing right here again, making sure everything's super glued. And I'm actually Kind of regretting not making this uh, Unbreaking 3 right now because we might actually burn through this and I'll have to get some more. But we're going to build off this with two stone and then over here on this side with another one. Obviously, we don't have the luxury of using this side, so you're kind of stuck on this one. But then we're going to grab out our powered latch and two more redstone links. Put the powered latch into the clutch and then we're going to put redstone link here and one right here. Again, all these need to be super glued to the stone, which then all needs to be super glued onto the mechanical bearing. Once we have that, we can grab out our block of redstone and we are going to set this one right here that's behind the powered latch to the two redstone blocks. And this one, we're gonna set it to a frequency we haven't actually used yet. So we'll do redstone block and then stone. And then we're just going to get an open hand. And I think we actually need to get rid of the super glue too to do this, but then we're gonna shift right click and both of these are gonna be receiving. So this already flips this right here, but the purpose will eventually be that this will flip it on, this one will flip it off and allow it to rotate again, and then it'll stop itself, which lets us lower this whole thing down. But we'll go over that a little bit more in depth once we set up the top portion of this, which is pretty much what we're gonna do right now. So we can begin the top portion of this setup, the last part we have to do before it's finished by putting down a rope pulley on top of this last vertical gearbox right here. And then we're just gonna wanna rotate it so that it's facing with the rotational power input coming in on the side where we already put down the encased fan for the mechanical bearing below it. Then to make our life a little bit easier, we are just going to make a bit of a stone platform coming out right over here. And we'll eventually be using this for a bit of additional redstone, so it's not gonna go to waste, but it'll make it a bit easier when we're setting some stuff up over here too. So off of this rope pulley, we are going to put down a sequence gear shift. And then off of that, we're gonna put down a vertical gearbox. And then right here, we can actually just hop down and we are going to put down an encased fan off of that and then a magma block and a lever on that. So right like that, flip the lever, and now we have rotational power that is going into the sequence gear shift and then we'll eventually go into the rope pulley. 
Now, it actually doesn't matter the direction of rotation for this, and I know last time we used a rope pulley, it was pretty critical that we had the correct direction, but the sequence gear shift gives us the option of doing the input speed forward or reversed, and it actually also lets us double the speed if we want, which is great because the encased fans are pretty dang slow and it's a little bit faster if we can double it. So the first thing we wanna do on this is come in and scroll the instruction down one. So it is turn to move piston, pulley, or gantry. And what this does is it allows you to set an exact block distance at the lowest, it's one, and you can scroll it all the way up if you want, but we're just gonna do it to one. And that means that the uh, pulley that we have is going to be lowered by one block in the forward direction whenever this gets a redstone signal. Now that's exactly what we want because we wanna lower this by one, let it go around, lower it by another, go around, another, go around, all the way to the ground, and then we'll have a nice little manual way to bring it back up. But either way, we now need to test which way is the correct way to lower it because I actually can't tell you guys, it depends in your world how you have this set up. So we need to do a bit of trial and error. So we're gonna grab out our button We'll slap it down right here, and it seems we have some annoying friends that came to join us, but we're gonna go, and all we are going to do is set this to make sure that it's input speed forward, and we're going to push the button, and nothing happens. So that means that that's probably gonna be the direction that brings it back up, that or I glued something incorrectly. So we'll put this on reverse, and we'll hit the button, and if we wanna come down and take a look to make sure that everything properly moved, Let's just make sure we don't get killed by anything. Uh, it looks like everything is in fact glued together properly, which is great. That's exactly what we want. We still don't know if this mechanical bearing is working properly, but everything else is glued together correctly from the way it looks. So we should now be good to bring it back up. And we just need to remember that the reverse direction is what's going to lower it. And the forward is what's going to bring it back up. So now if we press this button, everything should come back up with it which is exactly what we want. And then we're just going to come back in here and set it to double speed reversed. We want it going at double speed, whatever the correct direction is. And we will leave the button on here because this is what we're gonna to use to bring it back up. Now this might seem a little bit weird, but we're going to put a lever down right here, right now. And then we're gonna put some redstone down right here. And we're gonna make sure that the redstone connects to this lever and that's because we're gonna use this to jumpstart the setup later. When we set this up right now, you're gonna notice that it's gonna have a redstone signal already going into the gear shift, and we do not want this firing off just yet. So this will divert the redstone signal for now, and then later on, again, this will be used to bring the setup all the way back up. So we're kinda of using it as a placeholder right now, but it'll save us in the long run. Then we are going to grab out our adjustable repeaters, our redstone links, and I think that should be good. We're gonna have to build out a little bit more here with some stone, but we're gonna put down an adjustable repeater pushing into this redstone, an adjustable repeater to the side here, and we're gonna have to build this out a bit more. Then a redstone link right here, one right here, and this one is gonna be receiving, and this one's gonna be sending. And we're going to set this one right here to be the redstone and redstone, and you can see that's the signal that's coming through. And this one is going to be the redstone and the stone. And it's bugging out a little bit, uh, which I actually think is kind of funny because this one is powering this right here, uh, which actually won't be an issue in the future, but that's what's happening. So we can avoid this right now by coming down and quickly using some super glue right on the side of this right here and putting down our redstone block. And this, <laughs> this is gonna allow it to go around in a circle. And you can see right there, it just absolutely tore through the scaffolding that was there. Uh, but now you're going to see that it's gonna come in here and it's going to start going again. So now it's time to set up the timers properly for this. So this one right here is going to be set to one second. And this is basically going to be making sure that the system is stopped before the signal gets sent out. And so you'll notice it stops a bit longer here. And then this one is gonna be set to three seconds. So to kind of run through what's happening here, basically the system is going to start there. And when it hits, well, I guess we can start it from right here. So it's coming around, it hits there. That then gets the redstone signal, which first is going to give down here. It's going to power that toggle latch, which is gonna power the clutch, which stops this from moving. Then up here, 
it's going to wait one second. The signal is then going to hit the sequence gear shift, which will lower this down one level. And then once that happens, this over here will have three seconds before it comes down, turns off the powered latch, allows the clutch to power down, allows rotation through that, and allows this to go again. And then it cycles again and again and again. So whenever we are good to let this go, we actually just need to break this lever whenever it's going around and it should start working. So if we were to get rid of this lever right now, everything should start working which is exactly what we want. So if we watch right here, moment of truth to see if this actually functions, when it finishes coming around, it might need to do one more loop, but there we go. You can see it lowers by one and now it spins again. And it got, it got, it got rid of my scaffolding again, um, which is now gonna be in one of these chests somewhere. Let me see when it's stopped, if I can grab that out of one of these chests, if it's the beginning one. Uh, is it this one? No, it's, it's probably this one right here. Oh my gosh. I was super scared. We were lowering for a second. Uh, that's going to be taking up. Oh no, it's breaking that stuff now too. No, I didn't think this through. <laughs> okay. Well, that's why you don't want stuff on the ground around it, but those are now going to be in the chest. So it's good. We had some extra chests on there. Um, but this is why it'll be a, a little bit of a pain to get back up there. So I am actually going to make a bridge over there. I'm going to count out 17 blocks so it doesn't get mined. Um, but we can now see it start clearing stuff out here and it'll go around and it's about to be nighttime too. Thankfully I got my bed back, but what I'm going to do is I am going to let this run. I'm actually probably going to time lapse it and let you guys watch it run. And then when it's done, we can hop back. We can look at how to bring it back up so that we don't need to go down all the way to bedrock to get our loot. And I'll go over how we can actually bridge our way over to this and not die so we can access everything and all that good stuff. But it's nighttime out now, so I think it's time for us to let this do some mining before we hop back on camera. So the quarry is finally finished running. It's gotten all the way down to bedrock, which means it's just about time for us to bring this bad boy back up here and see all the different things that it mined for us. I will say it's definitely not the fastest. You can increase the speed by about four times if you choose to gear up the encased fan setup that's currently on that down there, since it generates 64 stress capacity and you're only using four times the RPM on the mechanical bearing, which means you can gear it up from four all the way to 16 and make it run four times faster if you choose. But this is the most basic bare bones setup you can go with, and you can just expand upon it from there. My point today was almost just to do a proof of concept and a very simple one, because to me, speed doesn't matter. I simply went and AFK'd, did a bunch of work on my laptop, and then came back and I had all the items here. So either way, it's going to get you there. It just may take a little bit more time, depending on how you choose to set this up. Either way though, it's time to go over a few key things when it comes to bringing it back up and actually getting your items out. And the first one is going to be how we get over to the platform. And it's honestly nothing fancy, it's just going to be building a little bridge to get over there. So we're just going to come up here with whatever block we want. I'm using stone because it's what I have on me, but we can just kind of bridge our way up here, nothing fancy, and definitely make sure we don't fall down. But now we're good to just come on over and we get to the, I guess, sort of operating platform, if you will, over here. And you can see I've actually already done some work here. So the only thing you need to do to stop this from running once it gets all the way to the bottom is put down a lever right here and flip it on. Now what this does is it's going to send a signal, most importantly, right here to this redstone link, which is the one that's on the far side that's going to turn off the toggle latch that then turns the clutch so that it can actually give rotational power. If you have a signal put into this, 
then once the quarry portion down there makes another loop around, it's not going to make any further loops because no new signal is going to come in here to turn off the clutch redstone signal since it's overridden by this lever. So that'll stop the bottom part from rotating and you actually kill two birds with one stone because as you can see, the redstone is now being diverted to the lever instead of going to the sequence gear shift. So now the row pulley is no longer gonna be moving up or down. So the whole system gets stopped simply by putting and flipping this lever right here. The next thing is to actually bring it back up. And this is really easy to do. It's why we have a button right here that we placed down earlier. You just wanna make sure that it is in fact stopped with the arm down there. And then all you're gonna do is come over to your sequence gear shift. You wanna check as to which direction it's going and then reverse that direction. So right now I am reversed. So I want it to actually be forward. So I can do double speed forward. And then I'm just going to scroll up the distance to bring it back up to me. And then I am just going to hit the button. And now you can see this entire thing is going to be brought back up. And while it's doing that, I can talk about a couple other important things. The one thing that I forgot to touch on that is critical to this system running due to a weird bug between the rope pulley and the mechanical drill is you actually need to go to the very central block of the circle you are going to be clearing out and mine that all the way down to bedrock. Now you can do this manually. You can do it with a rope pulley and a mechanical drill going all the way down. But with this system, when it's going down one, then rotating down another and rotating, the everything works on it except the one central drill. It bugs out the rope pulley for some weird reason. I don't know why. So there's no way around it other than clearing it out yourself or you're gonna run into issues where your system kind of breaks down. I totally forgot to go over this, but the easiest way to do it would simply be a rope pulley attached to a mechanical drill with some very low RPM going into it and just lower it all the way down to bedrock right in the center, right down there, and then pull it back up and call it a day. I do apologize for forgetting to go over this, but uh, I didn't even remember until the system started running. It's such a weird thing you have to deal with. I don't know why the bug is there. Maybe it'll be fixed. Some people have had luck with adjusting things about the sequence gear shift and timing and stuff, but I fiddled with it and there was no easy way around it other than just doing the mining. That doesn't really take long though, and then you get 50,000 blocks from this, so it's a pretty small price to pay. The other thing I wanna to touch on is we actually got a great example of how flawless this setup is outside of what I just discussed because one of the biggest concerns with automated mining is running into fluids, and in this case, it's both water and lava and we hit both of them, but it did not break and that's great. There's redstone components on here like that toggled latch that can in fact break with water, but because of the things surrounding it, the water is not going to flow there and break it because it's got nowhere else to go. So it is totally waterproof. And so it didn't break in the water even when it got placed down at every level and it didn't break even though water and lava came into contact repeatedly forming cobblestone. And this is another thing that can totally mess up automated mining because there's always more blocks for it to mine through. So it makes it very difficult for the system to not completely stall out, but this one has no issue. It does take a little bit to mine obsidian, but again, if you're really annoyed with the speed of it, you can increase it four times. You can even tack more stuff onto it. Multiple encased fans increase the speed even more. But again, this was just supposed to be the most basic version that I could possibly make. I've seen a couple different designs like this and they're a lot more complicated. They look a lot cooler. They're a little bit faster. So those guys have done awesome work with their setups. This is not a totally original design. Uh, I designed this from scratch, but I had seen those designs before and knew about this concept. So kudos to those guys. Whoever first came up with this idea is de definitely a very smart person. Um, but to each one, they have their own merit. This one is very, you know, cost effective. It gets the job done, but it might be a little bit slow. So if you don't have anything else to do and you're actually going to sit here and wait for this, well, maybe it's worth it to speed it up. So now it is back at the top. It is time to check on all of our items. Definitely be careful when you come down here. Obviously we can walk across this, no issue, but you don't want to go falling down there at all. So now we can see just how full this got. So it looks like we just barely had enough room. Uh, I assume all these are full, but we can grab out some of the things that it got us and see. We got some redstone, some lapis. We got some iron. The nice thing really is we got a lot of andesite from this. Um, I should probably not pull out all of this stuff. Well, we got eight diamonds, definitely not a ton. The big 
positive of this is most likely going to be the amount of iron we get because there is so much iron that it should come across while it's going down and let's see Ooh, looks like we want to drive for a couple chests we got some gold there uh let's see some more iron there lots of andesite some more coal we're probably gonna run out of inventory room Ooh, got some zinc i might be missing some of these in here uh some more iron nope nothing in there some more zinc copper iron wow okay so we'll i'll dump the coal back in here because that's really not that important to us uh let's see <laughs> we got some more we'll dump some more coal back in here some more iron uh we got coal in there and here's some of the scaffolding and chests that were uh collected by this that got broken during the beginning of the episode but this looks like it is the majority of the important stuff from here. So let's count it up and see how much we got. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, about six and a quarter stacks of iron. So definitely nothing to scoff at if you process that even through just the basic ore processing. If you've got other mods to work with, you can have way better ore processing too. Uh, we got about one and a half, one and a third stacks of copper, almost two stacks of zinc. We only got eight diamonds. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, about six and a half stacks of redstone. We even got some obsidian, a fair bit of coal, and honestly, probably like 15 to 20 stacks of andesite over there. So honestly, I think it's super fun. It's awesome. And now we have this huge cylinder in here that's about 50,000 blocks. So if you're looking for a place to fill up with infinite fluid, this is a little bit more than you need, about five times, but it'd probably look pretty cool if you decided to make some infinite fluid to fill this up and hose pulley it out. But either way, definitely make sure you don't fall in here. And if you wanna disassemble this, well, it's actually pretty easy to do. Just wrench all the pieces up and they'll come right back into your inventory as you go, anything at least from create, so you don't need to worry about it falling down. And you just want to make sure you collect before you do that things like the vanilla blocks like the glass and the chests because you can just walk on top of the drills and make sure you grab all those other than that though i think that's going to be it for today guys it's now nighttime probably a good time to call it hopefully you enjoyed the episode though let me know if you give this a try let me know how you think it compares to all the other forms of automated mining and i will talk to you guys later